Hello everybody, GamerPenny here bringing you another episode of our Lord of the Rings Online Let's Play. And we are back with Baird Beam. Um, and today, we're back where we need to be. Bingo kind of took us ahead. Um, so I'm going to hold off on the bingo quest for now. But we're going to talk to Nona. She is standing here by this dead drake, we'll basically. This creature, but not what we need to know. Where has its rider gone, and what cruel fate has kept us a step behind it at every turn? The creature was looking for something. Oh, we need to think. This rider. What was the word you used? Nazgul? The creature was looking for something. We need to think. It brought us on a chase through these lands, but I cannot tell what it sought, or if it found what it desired. We have no choice but to return to the village of the Horse Lords. I will wait outside while you speak with that man, Horn. We are strangers in this land. He is not. You may know of a place we have not yet searched. Eris Galadhan mirror for the yard? <laughs> okay. Let us talk on the way back to the village of the horse lords. Pebble. Has no one seen our new friend? Or the Dunlending girl? I thought they would have returned to Stungard by now. Did some trouble before them on the road? Uh-oh. We have a long way to go, Bairdbeam. As much as I wish I did not need to refuge at the town of the Horse Lords, it seems we must. We have lost the trail of this creature, this wraith of which you speak, and until we can learn where it has gone, we are only wasting time. It is frustrating to know our purpose and be unable to accomplish it. Well, let us keep walking. Uh-oh, does something happen to us? I'll tell you a story of Solvok used... Well, used to tell my brother and me when we were young. It will help pass the time. Long ago, there was a, nam a man named Freka who lived among the horse lords. He was wealthy and strong. His hair was dark like that of my people. He had Dunlingdish blood in his veins. He desired a marriage match between his son Wolf and the king of the horse lords' daughter. This king, Helm the Hated, refused Freka's offer with insult and violence. Uh, he lured Freka to a desolate place alone and slew him with treachery. And then, what? What is this? Easterlings, get ready to fight, Baird Beam. There'll be more of them, Baird Beam. Let us get off the main path. Someone said to zoom into first person when you can't see what's going on. Helps, I suppose. You feel that? Are we about to run into a Nazgul? I don't feel safe here, Beard Beam. Let us go up among the rocks. Right, out in the open? No, no, we should have just hid. Something is near, Baird Beam. It must be the wraith we have sought. It makes my blood run cold. Nona looks at you with wide eyes, and you are suddenly reminded that she has not had much experience with creatures of such evil. She puts her hand on the hilt of Wadu's sword, her sword, and her former fright is replaced with a grim determination. We found it. Now what do we do with it? Survive your encounter with great evil in the rush gore. Here's something. Look there. Do you see that? Oh, right there. Wounded Nazgul. Target not in line of sight. Get him. Oh my god, he's killing me. Nona's sword flashes with the bright light and the Nazgul flees from it. Ha! Coward. More Easterlings, get ready. Beam, the big one is running for his friends. Follow him. Get back here. Oh, 
What do you need? I will not run from you. I am your better. My people have powerful friends. I will show them how strong a man of Kundalar can be. <laughs> Suddenly, a woman's scream pierces the stillness. Nona is in trouble. Yeah, we should not have split up when there is a wraith that nearby. Grab this torch. Nazgul stands atop the hill. Get out of here! Ah! Oh, she's been stabbed. Nona lies crumpled on the ground before you, soaking in the blood from a sword wound in her side. She struggles weakly to speak. Baird beam. Are you? The effort is too great for her. She needs the aid of a healer if she is to survive this wound. Back of your mind, one worrying question refuses to go away. From what blade did she take this wound? Did an Easterling blade cause this injury, or was it the blade of a Nazgul? You prepare yourself for a long journey back to Stangard with Nona. Dang. We just put her on a fountain? <laughs> Beardbeam, is everything alright? Nona's breathing is ragged and shallow, and the gash at this side still bleeds around the cloth with which you tried to staunch it. When you brought her to stand guard, she was barely conscious. You found Horn near the entrance and begged for his people to tend to Nona's hurts. He sought out the leader of stand guard to see what could be done and has not yet returned. What were we saying? Rekka? Wolf avenged. What did she say? Oh, I know what it was. She mentioned Wolf. Dunlinging traitor. His treacherous father tried to kill Mighty Helm, and then the sun invaded Rohan and sat in Medusaled. Let her die, I say. Whatever made that sword stroke did my people a favor. Rude. I have his decision. I did my best for you, Baird Beam, but you are not going to be pleased. He did not understand why we should heal the hurts of this Dunlingden girl. Eventually, he relented somewhat, and he has agreed that our healers will do what they can for the girl. What? Heal the girl? Horn, this cannot be his decision. There is a condition. Our healer will see the girl's wounds, but she must relinquish all claim to the sword she carries. No. It is a sword of Rohan. It belongs with us. In Stangard, that is the price of her life. I am sorry. This is the message I was given. Do not let them. Nona struggles to speak, but the effort is too great for her to make out the words. She beseeches you with wide eyes, but you cannot meet her stare. Your gaze keeps returning to the blood soaking the floor beneath her. She tries again. Wadus. It was... You cannot give the Rohirrim what they demand. There has to be another way to save her life. I would die first. Don't be a fool. Our healer can save your life. I know our people are enemies, but you should not die this way. How would you have want me die? Not for a sword. Baird Beam, your friend is as hard-headed as the most stubborn of my folk. She could give Theoden King lessons in being headstrong. There has to be some other way, Baird Beam. You spoke of the elf witch in the woods to the northern north Alon Anduin. My people shun that place as a den of evil glamour, but if there was a power that could heal this girl. Horn glowers at you, his eyebrows knitted together angrily. A pox on her! I will not have her blood on my hands or on her own. Lead us to the self witch bear beam. I have heard the tales. Perhaps she will be unable to bewitch me if I am expecting it. Why did you ever bring this girl to stand guard, bear beam? This is not her place. Horn gazes into the middle distance, and in a quiet voice he continues. In stand guard, is a sword valued more highly than the life of a girl? What sort of man would willingly serve in such a place? He shakes his head, and the urgency returns to his voice. Well, for what are you waiting? Let us go at once. Going to Lothlorien. I will never call my people distrustful again, Baird Beam. The blindfold felt somewhat unnecessary to me. Only the most urgent of need has driven me here, and I would not want to return. Horn's face softens, and his brow creases with worry. You think the girl will recover? 
I saw the way the elves looked at her wound. Whatever they saw there, they did not like it. If it was not an Easterling blade, what does that mean for her? What is wrong? Baird Beam? Have you seen this before, Baird Beam? No, Galadriel. I have done what I can. The danger has passed, Baird Beam. The wound was deep, but it did not fester. And yet, I did not wish to leave this girl to the care of my healers. The risk that her wound has caused by a Morgul blade, and that she could become a wraith like the creature you encountered that night, compelled me to heal her hurts personally. If that had proven the case, I would have ended her suffering. It would have been a mercy and necessary to safeguard Lothlorien and indeed all hands. Do you think me cruel? I'm glad it did not come to that. I do not believe her wound has ca was caused by a Morgul blade, and it is my hope and belief she will live. I am surprised. We will speak more of it later, away from watchful ears. The girl Nona is sleeping. When she is awake, you will be brought to her. For now, you should rest, Baird Beam. Dream no troubling dreams, and Lothlorien, your rest will be peaceful. I am certain of it. What relief. I can hardly believe it. I feared the worst. There is clearly some glamour on this land. I feel as if I could take on any foe and achieve victory or cross any landscape, no matter the obstacles. Your elf witch works wonders. Only Son could do justice to her powers of healing. The relief I feel is, it is overwhelming, Baird Beam. The girl will live. Unless it is rude to ask it, I would like to return to the forest floor now. I will return to stand guard myself, but I would like to see you again. Once the girl is recovered, bring her as well. If I am to compose a song of your adventure, I will need both of your accounts after all. Along the banks of the great river, you evaded a great evil, but not without cost. The girl Nona was brought before me, wounded and in pain. I did for her what I could, but her fate is not yet clear to me. I think my microphone picked up that cutscene that was loud. <laughs> so, <laughs> cool. You have journeyed far and have come very close to death and sadness. And yet, still, you skirt the gravest danger and come safely through to the other side. I hope that our mutual friend fares... Friends fare as well. I told you earlier I had nothing to do with your dream, and this was true. But when you described your visions to me, I did not tell you everything I suspected. It seemed clear to me that your paths must cross one of the nine. I believed the girl would die. And yet, unbelievably, she did not. Either through your own actions or hers, you both escaped the clutches of the Nazgul. And either through curious good fortune or powers unknown to me, our mutual friends seem to have outdistanced its pursuit. There is no rest for, me, for we who worry for their safety. The Nazgul is not the last danger they will face. They and you are not free of evil's clutch just yet. Rest for a time, but not for long. There are plans to be made, Baird Beam. We will speak again, and soon. Awesome. It is nearly time for you to depart again. Within the woods of Lorien, guests of Lord Celeborn can recover from their hurts and the toils of a long road. It is my hope this reprieve was of use to you, Baird Beam. In these dark days, no time of rest is as long as we might wish it to be. It is nearly time for you to depart again. One motion of a lovely arm, Galadriel directs your gaze to the flets that cling to the bowl of the tree. Nona has made a full recovery, as she could have, and a greater one than I expected of her. She is waiting for you at the ladder down from these flats. I have made it known that it is my will she will be permitted free movement within the hedges of Karis Galadhan. Show her the city of the Galadrim, Baird Beam. We will speak in my garden when she is satisfied with her exploration of what the city has to offer. Where? <laughs> down this way? Ah. Oh, Nona. They tell me I was close to death. I remember very little of it. Nona smiles weakly at you. They tell me I was close to death, Baird Beam. I remember very little of it. I remember a creeping shadow and a chill, cold as ice, and her eyes narrow. The men of that town would not heal me unless I gave them my sword. But you spoke against it, and so did that man. What was his name? Horn? I should thank him for that kindness, even though he is of the horse folk and we should not trust him too far. The Lady of the Elf Woods told me I could see her city before we departed. If I were well enough, 
I tell you I am. This place is a marvel, though my own people would not wish to live here. Bring me to some of the notable locations of the city, Baird Beam. We have some time before we must be tar er, depart, do we not? Okay, go down. Um... Or not? Oh yeah, <laughs> I was like, or not? Okay. I mean, it is beautiful here. We'll see that person over there. This is a place of quiet contemplation. This is Sel... Selurulin, the white fountain of Karis Gladhan. It is a place for quiet contemplation where elves of Lorien are free to enjoy the sound of the water in the pool and feel the feel of a soft breeze is on the skin. Hurrian looks at Nona dismissively, and you can tell that despite Galadriel's words, not every elf is pleased to have the Dunlingdon girl within the borders of Lorien. Others can admire the fountain as well, of course. Hurrian finishes with a sniff. <laughs> Nona admires the delicate carving of the swan fountain. Beautiful. Okay, then we go... Bay. I have to go up. Uh, up even further? One get up there. How do? Oh, I see. I see, I see. Run up this. The verticality of this all is a little confusing to me, I guess, for some reason. so few visitors to Karas Galathon. I'm sorry, we see so few visitors to Karas Galathon that our hospitality is perhaps not what it should be. It must seem a very confusing place, with flats built on multiple levels of the Great Millirm, with winding stairs and bridges across the breezy gaps. Anglamel laughs, a delicate musical sound. You catch known as brief scowl at the airy tones, but Anglamel does not. I've heard it said Karas Galathon is as maze-like as the cities of the dwarves. But if this slander is true, at least our maze is above the ground, lit by the glow of the sun and cool glimmer of the stars. I would forgive any amount of confusion for those dual boons. Nona looks out into the void between flats and says nothing. Alright, and then... Down here. Does this go through? <laughs> By... How does one get down? Can you jump off the edge of this? <laughs> Can't see. It's dangerous, you just walk off the side here. Alright, we'll go down the old-fashioned way, I suppose. Oh, 
bum, bum. Uh. Oof, dizzy, dizzy, dizzy. All right, let's get down. And I want to go... Okay, I want to go this way. Up on our horse. I want to go up here. Around here. Do, 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 do. go down here. Where is it that... This one? It might be this one. Up there. Hopefully this is the correct one. Good God, how much skinny are you gonna make that? My horse might fall, I might fall off. I'm getting, my stomach hurts. <laughs> okay, then we wanna go here, all right. The Malon trees of Lothlorien are the mightiest to be found anywhere. Uh, in these, the wanting years of Middle-earth, it was once not so, but the passage of time and the spreading of darkness has caused much that was once great to wither and diminish. So it would be with the elves were we to stay. Already we have stayed too long. Ludros looks sideways at Nona, but she seems not to notice. It will soon be the time of man, and who can say how that race will deal with the challenges that lie ahead? These Malorns support the Telen Galadrim, the flets on which much of the work in our city is done. Without them, little could be accomplished. I hope the same will not be said of the elves when we have departed. Aww. Nona observes the mighty Malorn trees, but says nothing. Talk to Galadriel, her garden. Alright, let's go back down the nefarious stairway here. I'm gonna fall off of it. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> Wait, 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 we're going too fast. <laughs> wait. Oh my gosh. Okay, and now I'm too scared. I'm running into the wall. <laughs> I thought we were over the edge. Can you even fall off of this? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'm a little scared of heights, maybe. <laughs> Golly. All right, let's go talk to Galadriel. Pardon us. Um, how? You're here? Oh, this is a nice bridge. I would be sitting at this bridge all day long. One get into this garden. here. Have we never been here before? Like, I feel like we were at the- maybe I didn't run around and see everything before. I hope you enjoyed your respite. It brings me sadness to tell you it must be ended. I spoke to you once of the danger that awaited our mutual friends on their road, Beam. 
Her circumstances are hidden to me, but I have seen enough in my mirror to worry. Those few of the wise who know of their errand have known the simple truth since they departed. As they move further south, they move closer to a point of decision they can delay, but not avoid. They cannot leave the Great River without making this decision. Do they continue south and east to Mordor? Or do they pass through the cities of men and thereby take a longer road to the fire? The ring bearer must go to Mordor, but who will choose to go with him? I fear for the company, Baird Beam. Peer into my mirror and see if the visions of for you are as troubling as they are for Galadriel. Over Frodo. We're Frodo. We always knew that the Company of the Ring would face the difficult decision of what road to take. We simply did not know how soon. All right. I had to take a little break for there for a second, but we are here. We've got Perry, Perry, Pippin, Mary, Sam, Gimli, Legolas, Boromir. Oh, ranking of the Fellowship hasn't happened yet. Interesting. Well, Frodo, the choice is upon us at last. In Rivendell, you were appointed the bearer of a great burden, and this company has escorted you through the wilderness, beneath the mountains, and along the great river. All of us have done so in friendship and with an understanding of the Aaron's great need. Ooh, I'm out of breath, sorry. <laughs> I came running down the stairs. But now the path splits. Bormir has said from the beginning that his road leads to Minas Tirith and the war against the shadow that must surely be coming. But that way is not the way to the fire, and it is the fire that your burden must be carried. What is the fate of this company? Do we go to Boromir City, to Minas Tirith, or do we cross the river and make for the Land of Shadow? What should we do? Boromir, does no one wish to speak? Well, Frodo, you are the bearer. And you must choose your own way. I cannot advise you in this. What is your decision, Frodo? You need time to decide. I understand. It is no easy decision. None of these have been easy decisions. If only Gandalf were here. I have tried to play this part as best I can, but I am not he, and he... The ways of wisdom are shut to me. I'm sorry I cannot help you with this decision, Frodo, but it is yours to make, and I do not want to sway your mind one way or the other. Walk the northwest of Parth Gallon so you might be alone with your thoughts. Like over here. Thoughts of Elrond rise unbidden in your mind. Hello, Elrond. The ring you bear is the one, the ruling ring, sought by Sauron above all else. The evil he could work with it would be uncurable. It must be destroyed. <clears throat> there are those who would use the ring and not destroy it. Temptation to use the ring even for good is overwhelming. That is its power and its danger. The road to the fire is dangerous, but it is the only choice we can risk. Walk further west. You may be alone in your thoughts. All this way? Thoughts of Galadriel rise unbidden in your mind. <clears throat> Excuse me, I ate, I ate and then came running back down, so... Excuse me. Some rings that are... <clears throat> some rings there are that Sauron never touched. And they were not used for evil. They were used for growth and prosperity, and much beauty was wrought with these. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. The three elven rings belong to this worthwhile group. You remember the look of sadness on Galadriel's beautiful face when she spoke of this in Lothlorien. You fail your quest, Frodo Baggins. The workings of the three will be laid bare before Sauron, and he will control all. But if you succeed, even then there will be little happiness for elves. 
We will diminish, and all that was wrought with the three shall fade. No choice is free from sadness for my people, Frodo. <clears throat> Galadriel of Lorien would have happened what should happen. Even should it mean all her good works in this Middle Earth disappear and are forgotten. Goodbye, Frodo. Climb the stairs to the southeast so you may be alone with your thoughts. I mean, should Frodo really be out here alone? Like, honestly. Going pretty far, too. Thoughts of Gandalf rise unbidden in your mind. <clears throat> Few know the inner strength of hobbits as I do, Frodo Baggins. Many, even among the wise, would think this task too much for you. But I have seen the bravery of a Baggins when put to the test, and I know you will do what you must. The memory of Gandalf's warm smile fills you with deep regret. Yes, there is sadness on any difficult road. You must prepare for more if you are to face what must lie ahead. Your friends are dear to you, but you must be prepared for this truth, Frodo Baggins. Some of them may not return from this quest. Well, that's why he decides to go alone. <clears throat> Sorry about the throat, guys. That is why you delay. <clears throat> this quest is already lost. You must decide, Frodo. Thoughts of Bilbo rise unbidden in your mind. <clears throat> ah, Frodo, my lad. What have we gotten ourselves into? Trouble and bother? Your memory of the old hobbit makes you smile in spite of yourself and you realize how badly you miss him. Something has to be done, Frodo. All these important people with their endless meetings and councils weighing important matters, when all it needs is the application of some good hobbit sense. You at least need to go to Mordor, Frodo, my boy, isn't that so? As long as you have the ring, it is your burden to bear, as it was mine. Merry and Pippin and Sam, they would be fine. The others would watch out for them. If you bear the ring away, as it is your task to do, our friends would be less in danger. It will not be easy, Frodo, my boy, but it would be for the best. As long as our friends accompany you, the lives are in danger. Their lives are in danger. You don't want that. Best to go alone to Mordor. Aragorn and Boromir are strong men, and they will take care of our friends. Gimli and Legolas will watch out for them as well. Sam will not understand, but in time he may forgive you. What did Elrond say in Rivendell? That it was perilous to study the arts of the enemy as Saruman did? <clears throat> that must be because they can corrupt even the purest of hearts, no matter its intention at the outset. Uh oh. <laughs> Hello, Boromir. Um. Bro, fixing, speed of worry. Put on the ring. I know you said you wanted to be alone, Frodo, but you are simply too important to go wandering alone. If Aragorn is correct in his guess, it means the orcs have already crossed the river. They could be in the woods, even now. May I stay and speak, now that I have found you? No. I need you to go away. Back at camp, everything is endless arguments about where we should go. But you and I could decide much easier. With two, it need not be a tumult of voices. Yes, you hear the wisdom in it. I am glad, Frodo. I had feared you would not wish to speak to me, but it lightens my heart to know that you respect the wisdom of Gondor. 
For Gondor is where the greatest strength of men can be found, and it is where the Dark Lord's gaze is most drawn. If you were to come to Minas Tirith with me, we could protect Gondor. What do you say, Frodo? No. Why do you resist the course of wisdom? These elves and wizards speak only of hiding and sneaking, and they would have us destroy the very thing we need to defeat Sauron. Why do you listen to them, and not to me? It is my people who will pay the price for the failure of this foolhardy errand. My people will pay, not yours, hiding far away in some hidden dell where the enemy will never find them, if he even thinks to look. But he looks at Gondor. Yes, he does, and he will kill its people. And they will look to me and ask why I was not able to protect them. And I will say I had this chance and I let it slip away. I know it is a heavy burden for you, Frodo. Uh-oh. You are so small and weak. What if the ring had come to a man? Strong man of Gondor. Perhaps you could lend me the ring. Let me use it to save my people and then I will give it back. How can you say that? You have the very thing we need to defeat the Dark Lord, but you refuse to use it. You run knowingly to your death, and you bring with you the only hope we ever had of surviving this war. The ring should be mine. Give it to me. Give it to me, you foolish halfling. You have no right to it. If you will not give it to me, I will take it. I will take it by force. Uh-oh. The ring. What? Where did you go? Cursed halfling? Climb the summit of Amenhen. Escape from Boromir, Frodo. Run up the stairs to the east. The summit of Amenhen. Run, Frodo, up the steps! Boromir may not be able to see you, Frodo, but other things might. Hope this is the right way. Just kind of following the stairs. Proto, you do not know your danger. Stumbled blindly to the summit of Ammon Hen. Your heart is gripped with a sudden feeling of terror. Ooh. You sense a male malevolence present, searching, searching. Can I take off the ring? Sauron senses the ring. Take, take it, off. it off! Fool! Take it off! Take off the ring! You managed to remove the ring. Now you know what you must do. The terror of your recent experience is still with you, but you conjure the kindly face of Gandalf from your memories to try and fight back the dread. You can almost hear his voice, as clearly as when he spoke to you thusly in the Library of Rivendell. There are a great many dangers facing Middle-earth, Frodo, and your ring is responsible, even indirectly, for all of them. The orcs of the Misty Mountains stir, the l and Lorien is threatened with fire. The horsemen of Rohan fight back the wolves of Isengard. Corsairs put to sea from Herod, and endless armies march from the east. The mountain of fire is aflame, and the Dark Lord's forces are in motion. There are men who stand against him, men like Boromir, son of the steward of Gondor, and your companion. He and the men like him will fight for as long as they are able, but when all is finished, it seems to me they will simply be men. And for how long can men stand against such evil? No, Frodo, I fear that when all is reckoned, it will come down to one hobbit, after all, and the strength he himself can bring to bear. Perhaps that is always the way it was meant to be. You know what to do, Frodo. Oh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I guess that's it. So that was the breaking of the fellowship. Hello. Oh, Galadriel. This is one possibility among many. 
It is a troubling one, to be certain. You tell Galadriel what you saw within her mirror, and a look of sadness crosses her face. The mirror shows many things, Baird Beam, and not all of them come to pass, but this is one possibility among many, and it is a troubling one, to be certain. They may have need of your help. I want you to travel south along the river Anduin, Baird Beam, and to see what has befallen our mutual friends. None of the visions I have seen in the waters give me any hope that they have avoided the dangers into which they walk. If you can aid them in even the smallest way, it may be enough. Nona should go with you if she still desires to do so. I have known her for just a short time, but I do not think she wishes for anything but to adventure with you. Let her be an aid to you on a dangerous road. You will need a guide to bring you to the Falls of Raulos. But few of my people ever travel that far. No, do not shake your head in frustration. There is a guide who will suffice. His name is Corridon, and he is the elder brother of Sigilith. Gladriel smiles sadly. Yes, I, you see, I see you remember our fierce champion. Without her twin knives and the skill with which she wielded them, the efforts of the Golden Host might have come to naught. Her death in the Battle of the Tower has caused for grief in all who knew her. You will find her brother is cut from similar cloth, but if Corridon shares her ability, he does not share her temperament. Find him on Tilane Nadul in the eastern side of Karis Galadon, and tell him you need him as a guide along the Anduin. He is not called River Walker for naught. He is more familiar with the lands through which the Anduin flows than any elf in Lorien. Okay, we will do that, but we're going to do that in the next episode. So guys... We're gonna go ahead and wrap up here i want to thank you so much for all of your support on this series if you do want to see more of the lord of the rings online let's play make sure to leave a like or subscribe to the channel otherwise i will see you guys next time all right bye, -bye everyone